Hey, uh, hello, dear students. My name is Miriam Kurmanadeva, and uh, our today's topic is female reproductive system. It is the beginning of a reproductive system cycle, and uh, you will have three lectures and four practice classes. And today it is first lecture, female reproductive system. Uh, female reproductive system uh, comprises of the following organs ovaries, oviducts, uterus, vagina, external genitalia, and mammary gland is a skin appendix, but uh, due to its close relation to reproductive system, uh, explained here. Uh, here you can see on this diagram uh, structure of uh, anatomy of uh, female reproductive organs. Here you can see this is a uterus, uh, fallopian tube, ovary, uh, broad ligament, uh, uterine corpus, uterine cervix, vagina, and vulva. And this is also another section, longitudinal section. Uh, and here you can see also rectum uh, and the urinary bladder. This is uterus, uh, or, uh, fallopian tube, ovary, um, and uh, here it is vagina and vulva. Ovary. Uh, ovaries are small almond shaped organs lying in pelvic cavities. The surface uh, epithelium is simple cuboidal and known as germinal epithelium. And tunica albuginea is a dense irregular connective tissue uh, that is uh, directly beneath epithelium. The ovary can be divided into two components, cortex and medulla. Hilum is the uh, road uh, whereby vessels and nerves enter uh, and uh, leave the ovary. Medulla is the core of ovary, contains loose connective tissue and vessels. Remnants of uh, Wolfian ducts persist from embryonic period and are irregular tubules uh, lined by a cuboidal epithelium. Uh, on this diagram you can see uh, the structure of ovary. Uh, this is uh, cross section, no, longitudinal section of ovary. And here you can see uh, this is large follicle and uh, corpus luteum after, after ovulation. Uh, this is another follicle, medium in size, uh, all side inside. Uh, these are uh, blood vessels, connective tissue primordial follicles and this is cortex cortex and medulla and this is atritic follicle uh, here you can also see the um, structure of female reproductive organs uh, and especially uh, the ovary and here uh, it is shown the primary follicles uh, this are and primordial follicles, these are uh, blood vessels, uh, secondary follicle, and major graphene follicle. And this is uh, rupturing, a collapsed follicle. And um, this is the uh, corpus luteum and corpus albicans. This is a variant cycle. And um, this is uh, also, there it is shown the a menstrual cycle and the ovarian cycle, the endometrial changes uh, because of estrogens and proge progesterone and estrogens here. And uh, then I will explain this later uh, when it will be uterus. And here it is enlarged uh, diagram of ovary uh, schematical structure. And uh, here also you can see um, parts of um, uterus, uh, fundus, um, <coughs> body, and the cervix, uh, cervix, 
uh, cervical canal and three layers of uh, uterus, uh, endometrium, myometrium, and perimetrium. There are three layers. And uh, here you can see fallopian tube or uterine tube. And uh, this is infundibulum and it isthmus, infundibulum, uh, ampulla, uh, <coughs> and fimbria, fimbria of uh, ampulla. This is ovary. Um, and here it is also shown the structure of ovary, uh, cortex and medulla. Uh, Hilus uh, cells are identical to Leydig cells and may contain or in case uh, crystalloids. Small clumps of Hilus uh, cells are often found near blood vessels. Medulla contains stromal cells identical identical to those uh, which are in the cortex. Cortex has two components, a stroma and structures that uh, produce gametes. And cortical stroma has closely packed uh, spindle-shaped fibroblast-like cells which are arranged in a world pattern. And collagen fibers between stromal cells are prominent in outer cortex and with the time the amount of collagen will increase. Uh, here you can see histological structure of ovary. Uh, this is cortex, cortex of ovary. Uh, this is a cortex of ovary. This is graphene follicle, and this is an enlarged picture of this. This is wall of graphene follicle, granulosa layer granulosa cells of the stratum granulosum and uh, there are oocytes, oocytes, primordial and primary oocytes, follicles follicles and oocytes inside and uh, follicular cells are surrounding the oocytes and this is tunica albigenea and germinal epithelium is covering the ovary outside from uh, Teca folliculi, this is uh, Teca folliculi. And uh, uh, next is about stroma. Stroma provides structural support, forms Teca interna and externa around follicles and uh, secretes uh, steroid hormone. There, is, uh, there are three types of stromal steroid secreting cells. Scattered uh, luteinized stromal cells, which are numerous during pregnancy. Stromal cells that form thicker layers. Enzymically active stromal cells, uh, EASC, abbreviature, which are numerous in postmenopausal women and uh, secret testosterone. And about ovarian follicles. Ovarian follicles located in cortex and surrounded by stromal cells. A follicle consists of an oocyte surrounded by one or more layers of follicular cells. Two ovaries of young adult female have about uh, 400 leg follicles. Uh, most of them will degenerate. Uh, this process is called uh, like atresia. About uh, 450 follicles will cycle to ovulation in lifetime of female body. Uh, and uh, here uh, you can see the diagram of uh, formation of uh, egg, mm -hmm. ovarian cycle also. These are primordial follicle, this is primordial follicle, primary follicle, multilaminar primary follicle, secondary follicle, graphene follicle, discharged oocyte with corona radiata, corpus luteum, and corpus albicans. Here it is more detail, uh, primordi primordial follicle, the structure of primordial follicle is, this is oocyte with nucleus, and uh, one layer of uh, follicular cell. 
and this is primary follicle it has uh, basal lamina mm, follicular cells and they become uh, cuboidal they are, they are more flattened and here they are, they are more cuboidal and uh, mm, all side and uh, then it is going multilaminar primary follicle here you can see three layers of uh, follicular cells and that's why it is calling multilaminar and take a follicle also this is also three uh, follicular cells the a pellucida uh, new structure uh, it was absent here in primary follicle uh, here it is in multilaminar primary follicle and the uh, secondary follicle uh, here you can see the formation of antrum the beginning of formation of antrum here it is uh, also basement membrane uh, zona pellucida and uh, the teca folliculi, folliculi. Mm. graphene follicle then it is going uh, major uh, follicle and uh, here we can see teca externa teca interna membrana granulosa mm, and uh, coronary dieta surrounding the egg outside outside in the cumulus aporus mm, this is cumulus aporus and the uh, zona pellucida this is a uh, gray line uh, ring like ring this is zona pellucida and the antrum with the fluid types of ovarian uh, follicles according to morphological characteristics uh, follicles can be categorized into primordial follicles uh, growing follicles and major follicles and growing follicles also can be three types uh, unilaminar primary follicles uh, multilaminar primary follicles and secondary follicles and major follicles also called tertiary or graphene follicles as I showed you on the previous diagram uh, multilaminar, unilaminar, uh, secondary follicle and graphene follicle major about primordial uh, follicle mm, let's discuss mm, primordial follicles uh, contain a primary oocyte that entered the prophase of first uh, mitotic division primary oocytes surrounded with one layer of uh, flattened follicular cells which are separated by a basal lamina from the stroma many of them degenerate during lifetime uh, most numerous in fetus several million can you imagine this and one million at birth at the once onset of the uh, puberty uh, this is mistakenly written uh, this puberty puberty their number reduced to about a quarter of a million and uh, all sides about 25 micrometer in diameter and it has aerochromatic nucleus and large uh, nucleolus mm growing follicles oocyte diameter increases to 100 to 150 micrometers uh, nucleus enlarged and called germinal vesicle or GV organelles increase in number and amount uh, mitochondria several Golgi complexes rough endoplasmic reticulum free ribosomes and follicular cells become cuboidal and uh, unilaminar primary follicle has one layer of cuboidal follicular cells as you remember I uh, have told you the, about this on the, when I was showing you slides uh, diagrams and multilaminar primary follicle has several layers of follicular or granulosa cells Uh, zona pellucida is secreted by oocyte and is composed of three glycoproteins ZP1, ZP2, ZP3 forms just outside oocyte membrane thick uh, basal lamina 
uh, follicle cell uh, phyllopodia extend into zona pellucida as do oocyte microvilli joined by gap junctions. Stromal cell uh, differentiate into teca folliculae that has a teca interna and teca externa. A thickened basal lamina separated teca interna from granulosa cells. And uh, here it is shown on this diagram uh, histological structure of uh, primordial follicles. Here you can see this is oocyte, this is nucleus, <coughs> and uh, uh, follicular cell. As you see, they are uh, flattened mm, here, not cuboidal. And then it becomes cuboidal in growing follicles. And uh, this is nucleus and dark nucleolus inside. And this is stroma cells, uh, the nucleus of stroma cells. This is primordial follicle. This is a schematical diagram. Teca interna and teca externa. Teca interna. Uh, this is the uh, cells are Cells are more cuboidal with round nuclei and steroid producing cell, cell features it has. Uh, so, uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria with a tubular crystal and lipid droplets. Produce androstenedione, uh, which is converted to estradiol by granulosa cells. Highly, highly vascularized. And teca externa. Uh, composed of uh, connective tissue and stromal cells with the vessels uh, forming a plexus, cells are flattened. Uh, here you can see uh, primary follicle, a growing follicle. Mm, it has a zona pellucida, or stratum granulosum, top take follicle, called uh, external bodies. This is a uh, uh, unilaminar primary follicle and multilaminar primary follicle. Here you can see also unilaminar uh, one layer of uh, granulosa cells. And this is multilaminar primary follicle. And this is OA inside. Mm -hmm. And the zona pellucida, new structure, uh, zona pellucida is pink. Uh, ring-like layer, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this is also granulosa uh, layer and teca interna, teca interna. Uh, secondary follicles. Granulosa and teca cells increase in number in secondary follicles. Mm, uh, Fluid-filled spaces in granulosa layer fuse to form the antrum that become filled with liquid follicle. Uh, this fluid is an exudates of plasma and produced by granulosa cells. It contains uh, GAX, uh, glycosaminoglycans, uh, proteoglycans, and steroid uh, binding protein, uh, steroids, and some hormones. Uh, cumulus aporus is a small group of granulosa cells that surround primary oocyte and project into antrum. A single layer of granulosa cells uh, that immediately surround the primary oocyte is known as corona radiata. Most of follicle at uh, this stage become atretic. Some granulosa cells of atretic follicles do not degenerate and form interstitial glands which secrete androgens. Uh, here it is shown the histological structure of uh, secondary or antral follicle. Why it antral? Because uh, it is going formation of antrum. That's why also called antral. Uh, it has follicular fluid, uh, membrane granulosa, cumulus porous, uh, corona radiata, and teca interna, and teca externa. Here also you can see this uh, granulosa cells, this uh, granulosa membrane. 
this is Antrum with a liquid um, a fluid mm -hmm. Teca interna this layer and Teca externa this layer and the uh, outside and zona pellucida zona pellucida and nucleus inside major graphene follicles major follicle uh, develops due to continued uh, proliferation of granulosa cells and production of more liquid follicle which undergo ovulation uh, but by the time of uh, ovulation it may be over 2.5 centimeters in diameter uh, bulge from ovary surface because of continued formation of liquor, follicolic, humulus, or porous, detached and float freely in liquor, liquor follicle. Here you can see graphene follicle, um, structure of graphene follicle or major follicle. <coughs> follicle maturation of graphene follicle and this uh, is mature follicle and here you can see cumulus of porous uh, all side corona radiata uh, antrum uh, liquor follicle membrana granulosa uh, teca interna teca externa uh, here it is also shown histological structure of uh, graphene follicle Mm, this is membrane granulosa. Uh, this is liquor follicle. And here you can see also the smaller diagram. And uh, teca interna and teca externa. Oocyte meiotic divisions. Uh, first meiotic, meiotic division occurs just prior to ovulation under the influence of meiosis inducing factor and second meiotic division uh, then begins and stops at metaphase mm. second meiotic division is completed after fertilization uh, here you can see the diagram of uh, steps of meiosis mitosis and meiosis and this is in fetus and uh, postpartum uh, after birth and uh, uh, puberty period mm. <coughs> from primordial germ cells uh, because of mitosis it becomes ogonia and then uh, it forms all sides this is oogenesis uh, first me meiosis one occurs in oogenesis uh, initiation of meiosis here uh, leptotin, zygotin, pachytin, and diplotin uh, can be in meiotic arrest uh, in uh, fetus. And postpartum, after birth, uh, uh, in puberty period, uh, from non growing to fully growing stage, uh, then it, it occurs ovulation, uh, resumption of meiosis, metaphase 2, and again in meiotic arrest. And uh, unfertilized eggs uh, can it can be unfertilized eggs, uh, but if it will be fertilized, it becomes embryos and meiosis complete in unfertilized eggs. Uh, uh, resumption of meiosis also in the rest uh, and second step or second meiosis too uh, finished uh, completed in uh, after fertilization. Ovulation. Uh, fluid pressure builds uh, up until follicle ruptures due to formation of proteoglycans and uh, hyaluronic acid uh, and uh, attraction of water. Before ovulation, the surface of ovary uh, loses its blood supply just where the follicle pressing it and uh, known as stigma. And perifollicular uh, connective tissue broken down by protease, proteases 
and ovum or secondary oocyte is uh, drawn into open end uh, of oviduct fallopian tube ovum remains uh, viable uh, about 24 hours after ovulation uh, remnants of uh, graphian follicle are converted to corpus hemorrhagicum and here on this diagram it is shown the uh, steps of ovulation here you can see the cortex of ovary mm, with the primordial follicles these are primordial follicles uh, this is tunica albuginea mm, and secondary follicle uh, or graphian follicle and uh, this is it, it is going rupturing of uh, graphene follicle uh, the wall of uh, graphene follicle becomes more thinner and thinner because of pressure of uh, liquid and uh, <coughs> it is going rupturing and uh, oh, it is going to ampulla of uh, fallopian tube if it will be a fertilization uh, it becomes embryo and attached to the uh, endometrium in uh, uterus cavity. If it will be not, if it, uh, fertilization not occurs, uh, then uh, ohm it goes outside uh, during 24 hours through the cervix and vagina. And then uh, after 14 days uh, average uh, menstruation occurs. Corpus uh, hemorrhagicum. Uh, following ovulation, uh, the remainder of follicle collapses and some ruptured blood vessels leak into follicular cavity and forming a clot that is known as corpus hemorrhagicum. And then uh, it becomes corpus luteum. After removing the clot uh, by phagocytes and temporary hormone secreting structure formed by granulosa cells and thick internal cells known as corpus luteum. Uh, granulosa cells uh, hypertrophy into large pale staining granulosa lutein cells with organelles necessary for steroid production. Uh, they constitute about 80% of the cells of uh, corpus luteum. These cells produce uh, progesterone and convert androgen produced by thicker lutein cells into estrogens. And uh, thicker interna cells form thicker lutein cells, which are smaller and darker staining than granulosa lutein cells. Located in folds of cells in uh, perimeter of uh, corpus luteum, form about 20% of cells population and are highly vascularized. Produce estrogen, uh, progesterone and androgens. If pre pregnancy does not occur, corpus uh, luteum of menstruation survives only 10 to 14 days. And uh, in pregnancy, in it enlarges greatly due to HCG uh, and uh, lasts uh, uh, six months and uh, called corpus luteum of pregnancy. Corpus luteum of pregnancy grows to a five centimeters in diameter structure. Here you can see uh, histological structure of corpus luteum. Mm, this is a uh, septum of connective tissue. This is this 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 one. Uh, ovarian stroma. This is ovarian stroma. And uh, granular epithelium uh, and tecolutin. Uh, and uh, this is blood clot. Blood clot. Mm, and the fluid with connective tissue <coughs> connective tissue covering of inner uh, little cells uh, and the uh, take uh, lutein cells uh, along the septum among the uh, septum 
And these are blood vessels also. Uh, this is also diagram of um, corpus luteum, no worry. Uh, this is uh, granulosa lutein, uh, teca lutein, and central clot, blood clot. Corpus albicans. Uh, when the corpus luteum degenerate, it is invaded by fibroblasts, which manufacture collagen type 1, and form a fibrous structure known as corpus albicans. Large ones form after pregnancy and smaller ones uh, after each ovulation. On the surface of ovary, uh, remnants of corpus albicans is visible as a scar. On this diagram, we can see uh, corpus albicans of ovary. Uh, this is uh, this one and this one also. Uh, here it is shown. Why it is called albicans? Uh, because of meaning of this word uh, white. Uh, I'll be, uh, this is mean white. And uh, this blur. And that's why it is called uh, corpus albicans from Greek word. Mm -hmm. Here also you can see the corpus albicans uh, after, uh, after uh, corpus luteum. Mm -hmm. this, also, this is also diagrams of uh, uh, corpus albicans. Here it is, it is here. As you see, uh, it's mostly composed of, com then it becomes more connective tissue. And uh, connective tissue, mostly. Next is oviduct. Oviduct, this is a uterine tube, uh, and it is a muscular tube, uh, 20, 12, 12 centimeters long. It is the site of fertilization. And the uh, upper end opens into peritoneal cavity near ovary. Lower end uh, passes through the uterus wall. And oviduct has uh, four segments. Intramural part in uterine wall. Isthmus is adjacent to uterine wall. Ampulla is the dilated part. And infundibulum is funnel shaped part near ovary with fimbria. And here you can see these uh, segments, uh, for example, interstitial segment, isthmus, ampulla, and infundibulum. And this is ovary, and this is ligament, and uh, this is tube with uh, its uh, segments. And, uh, this is also mm, uh, ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, uterine cavity, uh, large intestine, and bladder, urinary bladder. Here you can see <coughs> Histological structure of um, uterine tube. Uh, it has uh, tunica muscularis also, mm. mucosa, submucosa muscularis, and the tissue. And uh, mucosa layer, uh, it is present um, columnar epithelium, uh, ciliated columnar epithelium, it's, uh, with the secretory cells also, and ciliated cells. Uh, secretory cells uh, secrets uh, mucin and um, uh, ciliated cells, uh, the main function of ciliated cells, this is the movement of uh, egg uh, through the tube to the uterus. And muscularis, uh, the main function of muscularis, the uh, contraction of these muscles are important for Movement of the fertilized egg in the tube also, mm -hmm. and 
uh, next uh, this is also anatomy of uh, uh, fallopian tube here you can see intramural portion of uterine tube here uh, is most of uterine tube here the ampulla ampulla and infundibulum this is ampulla and infundibulum with the fimbrias and this is ovary uh, this is a ovarian ligament uh, mesovarium uh, uterus cervix vagina bladder uh, broad ligament round ligament uh, adventitia uh, of uterus myometrium endometrium mm -hmm. this is also uterine tube and the ovary uh, mucosa of oviduct has many uh, longitudinal folds which are pronounced in the ampulla and mucosa has a simple columnar epithelium consists of ciliated cell and uh, non ciliated pack cell ciliated cells are numerous near ovarian end of the tube and pack cells are secretory cells that produce a watery tubal fluid contains normal uh, serum proteins chlorides and uh, potassium ions and cilia near ovary uh, e toward uterus but cilia near uterus b toward ovary uh, lamina propria composed of uh, loose connective tissue and muscularis consists of uh, poorly uh, defined inner uh, circular layer and outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscle layers cells muscularis peristaltic uh, movements with the beating of the cilia of epithelium help to propel all side uh, to the uterus serosa is the connective tissue layer uh, lined by a simple squamous epithelium contains blood vessels and nerves uh, here on this diagram you can see um, the journey in tube takes about five days uh, journey of uh, oh. um, and this is uh, also fertilization occurs uh, in uh, tubes oviducts uh, sperm enters egg uh, second maturation division begins uh, as you remember uh, meiosis tube uh, occurs after fertilization in ovum <coughs> uh, then this is a pronuclear fi fuse uh, two nucleus uh, uh, becomes one and the uh, first uh, cleavage division then early uh, cleavage division this is uh, steps of embryogenesis it becomes uh, blastula and more murla early and late gastrula and uh, implantation begins uh, and then implanted uh, growing embryo and here it is in endometrium of uh, uterus wall and train wall two days uh, usually uh, it takes two days to implant of uh, embryo and uh, about uterus we will discuss on second lecture I think uh, on this slide I will finish uh, our first lecture and uh, thank you for attention and we will continue uh, discuss about uh, female reproductive organs on next lecture okay uh, have a nice day goodbye